The Legend of Heroes Trails from Zero, or to fans already familiar, Zero no Kiseki, released on the PSP in Japan in 2010. Then Falcom contracted a Chinese company, Joyo Land, to port the game to PC in China in 2011. That PC port was then brought to Japan in 2013. Since it's Joyo Land developed, we'll refer to this as the Joyo Land version. The Japanese version of the Joyo Land PC port is required to apply the GeoFront fan translation project patch, which is such a a substantial patch that will refer to it separately as the GeoFront version. Meanwhile, Kadokawa Games published a Vita version in Japan in 2012 known as Zero no Kiseki Evolution. In 2020, Falcom themselves ported the PSP version to PS4 for a new version known as Zero no Kiseki Kai. Kai was also ported to PC and Switch in 2021 by CLE for other Asia territories. In 2022, Nice America is directed to translate Kai for the PS4. PS4, but also develop enhanced ports of Kai for PC and Switch, and to release all three versions the same day in North America. The enhancements on Switch and PC were done by PH3, so the North America PS4 version is still the Kai version, but will address the separate North America Switch and PC versions as the PH3 versions. Which version you play for Trails from Zero is important because of the time commitment the games require, and because your save file from Trails from Zero provides you with some bonuses when carried over to Trails to Azure, which we're getting for the first time officially in English in March 2023. Not only will we be discussing the changes among the newly released official English versions, but we'll be delving back into the differences in the game's several unlocalized versions, all playable in English thanks to fan translation teams and modders of each platform. I don't like covering modding too much in these videos because there's already so much to cover about the vanilla experiences, but given the wacky of a of this game and the fact that it didn't have an English translation for 12 years, it really can't be helped. And because of the mod's involvement with the game, we know a lot of technical details and nitpicks. Don't just take my word for the severity of visual changes because we'll point out things you may never notice. Most of our changes also do not involve the core gameplay, and rather more of this video will be about localization, visuals, and quality of life. So we'll start in 2010 with the PSP version. You can find a rough, unintentionally leaked fan translation for the PSP version, though it really is rough compared to the later translations and lacks features offered in the other version's translation projects. The in-game help references aren't translated either. It is arguably enough to follow along, but by playing the later translations, you'll realize how much supplemental information is inaccurate or missing here. Also be careful using real hardware because the game will crash when accessing the recipes list, slot machines, poker, or blackjack. Otherwise, the only other things to note about this version are that it runs at 30 FPS and it utilizes dithering on real hardware. And now we'll discuss Evolution handled by Katakawa Games. The PC version came first, but Evolution is pretty relevant for the modding of all the future ports, so let's introduce it first. Evolution has more side quests which help to alleviate the DP gains for rank ups and mini games like Darts 501, Clock Memories, and Koro Koro Mishi, which take advantage of the Vita's front and back touchscreens, as does accessing the notebook. Evolution also opens with a quiz not found in any other version, and answering it right will just give you some different kinds of curatives. There's a new animated opening and ending, voice acting for the main story dialogue, and a remix soundtrack. Evolution has a handful of unique visual tweaks, like dynamic character shadows, and character portraits are animated. Many higher resolution assets were incorporated, and the textures are actually identical to the upcoming PC version. Of course, it's all a bit blurrier thanks to the Vita's lower resolution. Also, just a heads up that the GeoFront fan translation project that we're going to be delving into shortly was also independently modded into Evolution, accompanied by an option to re-implement the original soundtrack if you don't like the remix music 
and also provide additional character portraits for characters that appear in Azure. There's still a lack of polish though with text not fitting and some other odd quirks. And now we can discuss the PC versions that are the Joyo Land version and the Geofront version. The Japanese version of this port is compatible with the widely known Geofront fan translation project. Out of respect for the official localization, this fan patch is no longer legitimately obtainable, but the importance of Geofront's work on this game cannot be understated. The goal of the translation project wasn't just translating and updating the game, but to provide fans with an English experience consistent with the other games in the franchise. Now the Joyo Land port is a pretty straightforward PC port. There's actually no in-game controller or graphics options, there's a limited config launcher, and the pre-rendered videos are only 240p. It does surprisingly have mouse support though. The Geofront patch, meanwhile, incorporates several features and quality of life tweaks. This includes actual autosaves for the first time that occur every map transition, 60, 120, and 144 FPS support, a message log with various window styles, soundtrack info pop-ups, unique treasure chest messages, messages, native Xbox Switch and DualShock controller support with accompanying button icons, and speed up options for field and battle. The Geofront project also patches a number of bugs and improves performance. Interestingly, the Joyo Land PC ports, backgrounds, and sprites utilized a combination of the PSP, original, and even redrawn assets. Overall, this meant that some sprites and backgrounds are higher resolution, however, the coloration on sprites are slightly off, and the style of some textures vary. Now, not only only does Geofront offer optional HD textures and movie assets, the Geofront patch gives this PC port in-game control and graphics options, Q custom cursors, options for anti-aliasing, texture filtering, FPS targets, V-Sync, extended draw distance, toggling status and minimap on the UI, and disabling the original minimal voice acting. There's also additional support for evolution content mods, including the side quest, movies, voice acting, and soundtrack. If you use the voice acting, there's also auto-advancing text options for it too. If you install the soundtrack, there's individual track settings for every track in the game. When you upscale a game like this from a handheld resolution to something like 1080p, you're gonna notice seams and z-clipping in geometry. Some instances of this were taken care of, but it's occasionally present. And now we come to the Kai version, which was made for PS4 and later put on PC and Switch in Asia territories outside Japan. This is the version that was also just released in North America on PS4 the same day as the PH3 versions for Switch and PC. Since this is the first time we've officially gotten Trails from Zero, there's no need for the Kai subtitle. The Geofront team partnered with Nice America, and their translation was used as the backbone for the official translation. Then Nice America had its own substantial passive editing. The resulting localization reads and flows perfectly fine and on par with the Geofront team's work. If you're curious about the finer details though, outside of some changes in lines, there's a small handful of typos and mistakes if that's the kind of thing that puts you off. Additionally, the unique chess dialogue originally done by Geofront was implemented as well with the messages changed. While Kai does actually feature the voice acting from Evolution, and it's even mixed better, the added side quest, texture changes, music, Music, animated opening and ending, animated portraits, dynamic shadows, and minigames from Evolution are totally gone. What we have instead is the vanilla PSP game, though there are still a few changes. The gameplay is now 60 FPS. The new options here not found in the original are a high speed mode toggled by either L2 or R2, and a toggle for battle voices. Enemies also can't fight you unless they touch the leader now, rather than anyone in the party. There's been some bug fixes such as an important speedrun running exploit where upon loading a save from the title, you could move before collision loads in, and you could use this to get through some doors and get to places early. The bonus XP multiplier also didn't work correctly in the game until now. XP multipliers would only take the whole number value of the multiplier, meaning values between 1.1 and 1.9 were only recognized as 1, 2.1 to 2.9 were only recognized as 2, and so on. Sprites and backgrounds were upscaled from the PSP, and not from Evolution or the PC version, though some portraits and other UI elements were updated and the draw distance was expanded. The UI itself is also much smaller to accommodate the screen size differences from handhelds. Geometry seams and Z-clipping weren't fixed either, and some texture mistakes were introduced. If these will be fixed, it's unknown because these have been in the Kai version for the two years since they came out in Japan.
And lastly, we have the PH3 versions for North America, PC, and Switch. It may not look it, but the PH3 version is still built upon the Kai versions made for PS4, but the PH3 version incorporates elements from all prior releases of the game, as well as the Geofront project, and is completely independent of the prior Switch and PC Kai releases. The localization here is identical to that of the PS4 version. There is a small handful of untranslated text found in the PH3 version, though count on these being patched. Being based on Kai, none of Evolution's missing content is present here. Once again though, there are of course mods in the works to add Evolution content, and one for the side quests already exists as well. Additionally, saves from the Geofront version are compatible with the new PC version. BH3 has incorporated a number of gameplay features that you'd find in the Geofront version, mostly recreated from scratch, along with some new features as well. If you were to pick up the PS4 version, this is what you'd be missing from the Switch and PC version. Versions. Returning from the Joyo Land and Geofront versions is autosaves, though they're on time intervals now, full mouse support, a message log, soundtrack info pop-up, and separate speed-up options for field and battle. Other changes include a setting for who starts the battle when touched between the leader or party, options for faster map transitions, autosave interval options, UI scaling options, and options to hide statuses, the minimap, and conditions on non-selected characters. There's full control remapping, button icon options, and toggles for battle and field voices. Given the voice acting is present already by default, really the only thing that the Geofront project has that's not here is auto-advancing text settings. There's been a plethora of mechanical and visual bug fixes, including everything we pointed out in this video, such as any model seams or z-clipping, with exception for the localization's typos. There's still unique bugs to this version though, like the untranslated text, and a really rare chance of portraits not showing. Visuals once again see some returning features from the Geofront and Joyo Land PC port, in addition to new features. So the PH3 version has options for borderless window, monitor select, arbitrary resolution support, V-Sync, FPS support up to 144 with variable frame rate support, anti-aliasing, anisotropic filtering, restore the original sprite coloration, and the expanded draw distance remains. New to this version that's not in the Geofront version is the return of Evolution's dynamic shadows, and Steam Deck optimizations. Character sprites were AI upscaled using the Joyo Land's higher resolution sprites. Backgrounds meanwhile take from each prior version, select various elements of each prior version, combine them with AI and scaling and individual manual touch-ups, and then provide what we see here. The UI elements also use the source assets, new screenshots, or were redrawn. A surprise for the Square fans of my channel, the Switch version actually runs at 1080p 60fps with anti aliasing and even the extended draw distance intact. The only features I mentioned that aren't in the Switch version are of course the mouse options, and the graphics options offered are for toggling the anti-aliasing, the character glow, and dynamic shadows. Geofront's work is legendary, and the work passed on to Nice America is something to appreciate in this industry. It really should happen more often. There's rough spots, minor lack of polish, and some hang-ups that I mentioned, and really their value is subjective, though I'm personally more forgiving because of the insane amount of text that's in these games, but I get vocal fans who have seen these kinds of things repeated before. And we did try to hammer home that the PS4 version is different from the Switch and PC version so much, because again, they released on the same day, and there was very little communication that the PS4 version wasn't going to see the same improvements as the Switch and PC versions. Why there are differences, I don't know, but it does seem to involve people higher up making executive decisions and licensing. There's no wrong way to play Trails from Zero, and like with all my videos, I think it's really important to know what you're getting yourself into. So I've got multiple port reviews coming this year still, and have a hefty list of games for next year, including the Persona games. Like and subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and if you want, you can support me via Patreon. Till next time, thanks for watching.